the silver price and the gold price, well, heck, they've been on a tear lately. We don't know how to react. We're not used to such strong price movements in our friends silver and gold. But will it last? We're going to talk about that in this video. We're also going to talk about a shortage of silver, not just on the retail bullion size, but the big picture of what's going on right now in the world of silver that points towards a silver shortage. And we've got a analyst who's calling for $2,700 gold. And it's interesting. We're going to dig into what he says because he actually like poo-poos a lot of the common uh, thesis uh, items that a lot of people use to explain the benefits of owning precious metal. So we're going to dig into what he says, listen to what he says. But what's super interesting is he then goes on to predict $2,700 gold. And I'm going to tell you when and why he sees that happening. Nobody cares about gold and silver. We know that. We're going to talk about that as well. And Rick Rule had something very interesting to say about what we can anticipate within the next 10 years. And we're going to talk about how that directly can relate to the price of gold, the price of silver as well. Thank you guys for being here. We got nothing better that we could be doing than hanging out together on a Saturday morning. It's a big deal. I appreciate you giving me your time. Please give this a thumbs up. That helps me feel better. I'm a delicate flower, you know, and it helps get this information out to more people because you're probably like me. Do you believe that silver and gold are a great way to not only invest, but also protect ourselves, right? We dig in the dirt. We go undercover. Now let's talk about what's going on in the silver market. I had a very interesting comment sent to me by one of our subscribers, Piereus Ryan. Let me, let me, let me break down what he said that shows this developing shortage in the silver market. He says it's calculated that there is a one quarter billion ounce, one quarter billion ounce. That's the same as I believe 250 million ounces of silver deficit for 2023. Okay, meaning that the demand for silver over the amount that's being mined and provided by recycling, right, is 250 million. There's, there's a shortage of 250 million ounces. Above ground reserves, this is interesting, are estimated, again, this is according to Mr. Ryan, at 4 billion ounces. So there's 4 billion ounces sitting above the ground right now. Two billion are owned by the banks. So the banks own two billion ounces of silver and two billion are owned by the public. That's you. That's me. Okay. So of the four billion ounces of silver sitting on the, uh, that's out of the ground in storage, either in your basement or my vault or wherever, right? Uh, the, 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 of all that four billion, two billion is held by investors, two billion by banks. I didn't know that. I found that very interesting. At what price will physical silver be made available to supply this deficit? Now, let's back up for a minute. Of that $4 billion, right, $250 million this year alone will have to be taken out of that. And if the demand for silver uh, uh, continues to increase like is projected because of solar uses, because of electronic uses, because we have a dwindling output from the mining companies, we could see that number raised to as much as maybe even a half billion ounces. That, you know, look, there's only 4 billion above ground right now, and not everybody's going to sell. So he poses this question, at what price will physical silver be made available to supply the deficit? The banks are clearly not selling. He's, oh, oh, I, yep, guys, look, she's back. Susie's back. She, we got new batteries in the walkie-talkie. I'm going to ring the bell. 100 thumbs up. That's one ring of the bell for each 10 thumbs up. Thank you very much. You guys are the best. Banks are not selling. He says, go check the COMEX contracts to confirm. Banks are not selling their silver. Owners of physical silver. Now that's you. Are you selling your silver? Am I? I'm not selling. I've never sold one ounce of silver. 
I don't think I ever will sell one ounce of silver. <laughs> to be honest with you, I might convert it at a super high value, relative value for maybe land or another real asset if the uh, if we get into a little bubble situation with silver, but I'd never sell any silver, okay? Um, owners of physical silver willing to convert to fiat will fulfill this shortfall and determine the true value. So what he's saying is that at some point, Right, the people that own it, either the banks or the individuals, as the price measured in fiat unicorn fart dust goes up, at some point people will sell. Okay, um, demand is forever higher than supply. Are we at peak silver? I want to pose that question to you. Remember peak oil now, right? And now they're talking about peak gold. Have we reached peak silver? Have we reached a point because we know? For the last few years, the amount of silver being pulled out of the ground has gone down. We know there's minimal investment being made into the pipeline of future silver projects for the silver miners. We know that the majority of silver comes as a byproduct of copper mining, zinc mining. We also know that those metals, the newer deposits, are occurring with less and less coexisting silver in them, where will the silver come from? Okay. Demand is forever higher. Thank you for pointing that out, Mr. Pieris. Ryan, right. Demand is going up while supply is going down. Think about this new reality. So do you hold convert your convert to fiat or stack? That was his question. Me, I'm a holder, right? I'm not going to convert this to, to fiat. I hope you're not going to convert to fiat either. But as we're moving into this next 10 years, I thought that was a great synopsis of the big picture for silver in regards to a potential silver shortage. Now, that guy, Jeff Christian from, what is it, CPM Group, he would say, Ron's a pumper, Ron's a, a guy. People like me that talk about silver shortages are, are pumpers. I'm somehow, uh, you know, secretly uh, supported by the uh, silver mining industry, which is not true, by the way. This right data like that to me indicates, yeah, sure, there's 4 billion ounces of silver available according to this data, right? But we're also slowly draining that. And I wouldn't even say slowly draining. I would say we're quickly draining that silver from that stockpile, right? This year, 250 million ounces. And as the demand continues to go up, we're going to see an even faster drain while at the same time, right, that deficit continues to grow as well. I think there's a bright future ahead for the silver price, not just price, right? Because that's measured in dollars. Who cares about the price? The value. You know, a loaf of bread could wind up costing $20 five, 10 years from now, right? What we want to make sure is that with that ounce of silver, even if bread costs $20, per loaf, instead of getting maybe 10 loaves like you do now, maybe we'll be able to get 20 or 30, maybe even 100 loaves of bread because the silver market is so small. Think about it. A billion ounces a year, roughly, in total, is what comes from the mines and recycling. It's only $20 billion, guys. $20 billion. Yeah, I know, only $20 billion. Well, think about this. Our president wants to send $100 billion to help foreign countries uh, in their war efforts, right? That's one-fifth of what, of, what, of what we're going to send. $20 billion, could, I mean, the amount, the silver market is so small, so delicate. Thank you, Craig, for the super chat, my friend. Always appreciated the super chats. They go a long way helping support the channel and the family here at Ron's Basement. They're all upstairs, nonetheless. Nonetheless, $20 billion, it's a small market. It's sensitive. It's delicate. If you want to get yourself some silver before it's maybe all gone, right? You want to get your little share of that 4 billion ounces? You know where you can get it? Right there. Pimbex, online bullion dealer, sponsor of Ron's Basement. I buy my metal from Pimbex. Check them out. You'll find the best prices, the best selection, okay? And the best service 
and they donated a 10-ounce silver bar to the Big Rounds Basement Giveaway tomorrow, Sunday, October 22nd. Let me check. Yes. I'll put out the giveaway video with explicit instructions on what you'll need to do, which I'll give that away to you right now. You'll just need to leave one comment on that video and you'll be automatically entered into the giveaway. And I'll tell you exactly what the comment, the one word that the comment has to include. Okay. So be on the lookout for that because we got a lot of other stuff. Jim M who's here in the chat and moderating. And please say thank you to all the moderators. Jim donated some silver. I'm going to throw some in. We've got other amounts. It's coin shop. Chris has some stuff in there. Uh, we're going to have some gold backs in there. It's going to be a big giveaway on Black Friday. So stay tuned for that. All right, guys, are we, are we, how does this make you feel? Are we in a perfect setup for the gold and silver price right now? Is Ron just a hopeless optimist? Thank you, uh, Alexander. Thank you, Alexander, Alexander, for the super chat. Wow, you guys are blowing me away. Are we in a new paradigm? A new environment, a new world for the value of silver and gold. I want to point out three critical things we need to consider when we think about what's going to happen to the value of the metals in the coming, we're going to say, six and a half months, okay? <laughs> six and a half months. No, see, this is serious business, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Hold on one second. Have you considered, have you considered, we have a 5% 10-year bond yield. That is bad, bad, bad for the price of gold. That's like jumping in a river and trying to swim against the current. The 10-year bond yield being that high, and it's not been that high since what, 2007 or something like that? is a headwind is bad for the price of gold. The dollar is at near historically high levels, not a record high, but the dollar, the DXY, when you measure the dollar against a basket of other currencies, everybody will say, that's what all the talking heads say, the dollar's strong, the dollar's strong. And that's a headwind for the price of silver and the price of gold. Third factor to consider, Nobody cares. Look, we hate to admit it, right? But viewership of YouTube content surrounding silver and gold is way down. I heard an author, and we're, I'll talk about this a little bit later, okay, who writes about silver and gold. Talk about the number of people reading his articles is down. We've got three major factors pushing down, putting downward pressure on the price of silver and gold. Why is that a good thing? I'm going to tell you, it's a good thing, right? You've got high interest rates pushing down gold. You've got a strong dollar pushing down gold. You've got the fact that nobody cares. We care, right? Right? We're, the, we're out in front of the pack. I'm not, we're, we're smart. It's a good thing we care. But the reality is nobody cares. You get these three big factors pushing down the price. Let me give you an analogy. Let's say you were a sprinter and you run the 100-yard dash, okay? And you're practicing. You got the big meet coming up and you're out at the track and your coach is there. And you run your 100-yard dash and you run a near record 100-yard dash. Congratulations, I always knew you were fast on your feet. And your coach says, oh my gosh, look, you've almost, you're only 4% below a new record. But your coach then points out to you that there's a 20 mile per hour wind run in your face that you were running into. Okay, now stay with me, because this has everything to do with the price of silver and gold. So your coach says, look, Oh my gosh, you almost you almost set a school record and in the 100-yard dash, you were running directly into a 20-mile-per-hour wind. That is exactly what silver and gold, okay, especially gold, and you know what happens with gold eventually will happen with silver. That's exactly what gold has done, right? Gold, despite that 20-mile-per-hour headwind that it's running into, 
is darn near an all-time record. It's already at an all-time record, you know, measured in Japanese uh, yen or Chinese yuan, maybe even the euro, maybe the Canadian dollar, right? We're waiting for it in U.S. dollar terms. Think about that, guys. Think about that, right? It is. It ran a near record 100-yard dash over the last two years with those three big factors in its face. Let me ask you a question. What's going to happen if just one of those factors changes? What's going to happen if interest rates go down? Oh, right. That would be very good for the price of gold and silver. What would happen if the value, if the dollar retreated from its near historic high range that it's in right now? Let me show you something. I have a, I have a fancy chart. Don't you think? I put, I put some time into this, baby, and I even colored this one in for you. This, my friends, can you see that? Oh, here, hold on. You, can you see that? This is a chart of the U.S. dollar since 1985. Okay, hold on here. I need to move this out of the way. Bear with me. Oh, shoot. <laughs> hold on. We're having technical difficulties again. Bear with me. At least we're not fuzzy today. There we go. Okay, so this is a chart of the U.S. dollar since 1985. That pink line is where we are now. Notice the small amount of time since 1985, and that's what, 15? That's like almost 40 years, right? The dollar is high. The dollar is destined um, is destined to go, to, re to revert, to go down, all right? That's gonna happen. That's one of the three things. Where'd I put my notes? Uh-oh, here we go. I'm back. <laughs> oh, buddy. Thank you, Julie, for the super chat. Wow, man, super genero super amount of generosity this morning. That's the good news, guys. If gold has done a near record performance, which it is, right? What was gold at? 1975 on Friday? Right? In the face of these of these factors that were pushing it down, just imagine where we could be heading. And that's why when we hear predictions for next year, like $2,700 gold, where the heck do you think silver is going to be at $2,700 gold? Leave it. Leave it. Let me ask you a question. Let me, I, I want to see a, I want to see a show of hands. Where do you guys think the price of silver will be if we get 20? I talk about $2,600. we are going to go with $2,700. And I'm going to explain to you why in a little bit. Um, where do you think we're going to see the price of silver when we get to $2,700 gold? Come on, I'll read the first 10 predictions. All right. I'm waiting. 35 bucks from Coda. Good to see you, my friend. All right. Awesome. Hello, Craig Edmonds. He doesn't know. <laughs> $50. $150 from Shannon. Kenneth says $50. Sassy Silver. $150. Coin Shop Chris. $99.99. What? Tony Erickson, 37. Awaken Silver, 150. Patriot Paul, 85. All right. Thank you, Jim M. Yes, please. Type the tap the thumbs up. Marcos says 80. Rick Kuretz says 32. Carl Blackwood, 250. Snakebite, 75. Brandon, 40. Peter, 42. Uh, Peter uh, Davila, 42. And Tommy Stevens says, I hope silver drops even more. He wants to buy a 100-ounce bar. You know what? You need to watch a video, Tommy, that we're going to have out this afternoon I did with Coin Shop Chris where he showed an over $350 price difference on 100-ounce silver bars at the major online bullion dealers. Yes, a $350 price difference. And you know what that means for you? That means with that $350 plus that you save, huh, you can buy yourself a 10-ounce bar and three South African Kruger ants. So check that one out. All right, guys, let's move on here. Let's move on here and talk briefly about the mining stocks. Some of you like the mining stocks. There's unbelievable value right now in the mining stocks. Yes, First Mining Gold is my sponsor. Right? If you want to buy gold in the ground in Canada for less than $10 per ounce, you need to check them out. Keith Newmeyer started this company back in 2015, 2016, and they cherry-picked a lot of the best projects available in Canada. 
gold in the ground. They have over 13 million ounces total gold in the ground in Canada, a safe jurisdiction. You can talk to a guy there named Paul Morris. He's their director of investor relations. Send him an email. His email address is in the description of this video. You can tell him you just say hello even and tell him you heard about the company through Ron's basement. Okay. Um, thank you. Now let's move on to why this author is talking about 2700. I got to we're going to we're going to dig in. I parsed through this and got the highlights. Uh Avi Gilbert wrote an article and he's a he's a well-respected author in the silver gold community, publishes a lot on Seeking Alpha. That's that subscription service that you have to pay to read, but he wrote an article and it's on Kitco and the title is No One Cares About Gold and Silver. But you, yes, you should. All right. Now he basically, basically goes through a process of of talking about how people say gold is a, and silver are, are safe havens, and gold and silver do well with in, in, in inflation, and and that gold and silver can't do well because of the dollar. All right. Let's see what he says. Let's start with the safe haven fallacy. He says, the last time we saw the occurrence of a major geopolitical event was when Russia invaded Ukraine. Yet, gold was already in rally mode before that occurred. Remember that? Well, it's almost two years ago now and was not too far from a top we were expecting at the time. So even though gold and silver did spike higher after that invasion, within two weeks thereafter, it was lower than where it was before the invasion. Okay, so he's pointing out the fact that, yes, sure, gold and silver can spike when there's major geopolitical turmoil and people are moving to safe haven assets. But what he says is, basically, in the long run, that doesn't do a lot for the long-term price of the metals. And we've talked about that. We said, you know, we don't want to have a high silver price or gold price on the back of pain and suffering of other people around the world. But really, in the long run, you know, I don't, I, I'll just tell you this right now, okay? And this is not what he says, but I don't know how you feel about this, but does it make sense that what really is going to affect the price of silver and gold is just the utter destruction, slow motion destruction of the value of the dollar? For those of you who live in the United States and, and, and measure, quote unquote, which we shouldn't do, but we do anyway, measure the price of of gold in U.S. dollars. In the long run, there's nothing the deteriorate. What's that? Let me say something to the viewers. You want me to? Hold on, Susie. I've made the mistake of putting new uh, batteries in here. Do you want me to say something to the viewers? I'm just the walkie talkie so I can say something. Oh, okay, go ahead. Thank you, everyone, for giving Ron thumbs up. Now, Ron, it's cowbell time. Okay. Okay, thank you. I love you. I tell you. You too. I got the best wife in the world. If you're as lucky as me, you know, we're not perfect, but I got the best wife in the world. I got to ring the cowbell. I'll be right back. We ring the cowbell when we get the 200 thumbs up. That's a Ron's Basement tradition. So this guy's saying that gold and silver, the real long-term price is not dependent on the safe haven uh, 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 component. Now, let's think about something else, though. All right. Let's think about I, I, I'm going to take I'm going to I'm going to take up uh, a little argument with him. What about the fact that with the bifurcation that's going on in the world right now, the geopolitical strife like we haven't seen in our lifetimes, and I'm 53 years old, what about the fact that we got half of a world that doesn't want to be in the dollar, the traditional safe haven asset, the dollar and U.S. treasuries? Do you think China wants to buy dollars when they're scared and worried? Do you think Russia Wants to hold dollars, you know they already had theirs confiscated. Do you think Brazil, do you think the Saudi Arabians who are on somewhat thin ice, thank you, Tony, for the super chat, no. So I would say that the safe haven, I will, I will, I will partially not agree with this man, and let me know your thoughts on this as well. 
But I think that the safe haven status of gold is actually becoming more important, more attractive, especially especially to this growing segment of the world that doesn't want to go put their money in dollars or treasuries when when the when the when the turd well when the turds hit the toilet there that's as dirty as I'll get when things are bad okay it's that so so but I do understand what he's saying too and in the long run it's the dollar getting destroyed that are going to uh, that are going to uh, affect it now he talks about this big rally guys were you around in 2015 16 in the metals market it was horrible and then we had a rip your face off rally especially in the mining stocks especially even with the price of the metals he points this out. Major rallies begun in the metals market have not been triggered by geopolitical events. Just ask yourself, just ask yourself, if were there any geopolitical events which started the rally we saw in 2016? Okay, brings up a good point. That rally took almost everyone by surprise. Yes, true. As most were extremely bearish of the metals at that time, well, almost everyone, because he was bullish at that time. Hey, thank you, Osman. Good morning from across the river, Illinois. Thank you for the super chat. Okay, gosh, we're over 440 people. We're going to get to 500. I can feel it. It's a good day. It's a good day. So he kind of throws water. Now, don't forget, this guy has a very interesting prediction for the gold price, which I think could equate into, um, I'm going to say $53 silver next year. Next, he talks about inflation. He says, what astounded me even more, because, you know, inflation is what really affects the price of silver and gold. And again, I would argue in the long run, that's, that's dilutive to the U.S. dollar. That makes the value of the dollar go down. In the long run, it does. But he brings up this point that he... Well, that what astounded me even more was an article reasoning that we should wait for inflation to dissipate before gold will rally. Yeah, the screwed upside down world we're in. It seems that there are people that are surmising that since gold did not rally due to inflation, right? Because gold really didn't rally during that massive inflationary period we had, then it must mean that it will rally when inflation subsides. And yes, I shook my head. Um, so he's making this art article that you hear. He says this. Uh, so what conclusion should you derive from any arguments focused upon inflation or deflation? You should ignore them because anyone that relies upon those drivers has no clue about how metals work, nor have they bothered to review the lessons of history. Again, I would partially take um, a, 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 a issue with what he's saying. I think inflation in the long run does absolutely impact the price. You're going to tell me, my friend, that if we had uh, two years of 80% inflation, right, the dollar was then worth a third two years later of what it was, that would be hyperish inflation, that that's not going to have an impact on the price of silver and gold? I think it would. What about stagflation? You don't talk about that. We've talked about it. What do you think stagflation does for the price of silver and gold? We'll look no further back to the 1970s. And when we had stagflation in this country, we had rocket fuel, rocket fuel for the price of silver and gold. Many people, including some of us here in the basement, think that we're likely heading into another stagflationary environment right now, right? The economy is slowing. We know the reality, not the BS, not the Bureau of Labor and Statistics reality, but the reality of what the trucking companies are telling us, the reality of what the railroads are telling us, the reality, the real, real numbers, not the make-believe unicorn fart dust numbers that come from the BLS, the Bureau of Lies and Statistics. No, the shadow stats numbers. Do you know that website? That's where they track inflation, like the real numbers. And guys, if we've got a slowing economy and a real inflation problem, we do have stagflation, and that is good for the price. And the dollar. He says, lastly, I've seen many arguments that claim that gold does not rally when the dollar is strong. And because the dollar is strong right now, then gold will not rally. There are two main issues with this argument. Um, he, basically, he says he wants to point to the fact that right now the DXY, the dollar 
index. I think I showed you that chart earlier, right? The DXY is just below a 20-year high, and so is gold. So gold can rally when the dollar goes up in value. Now let's review quickly, basement dwellers, huh? Seller dwellers, let's review quickly. When they say strong dollar, again, that's like comparing the worst three cars in the worst used car lot in whatever city you live in. Imagine going into a used car lot and you're looking and and there's three cars there. One's called the the Euro, one's called the Yeni, and one's called the Dolly, the dollar, okay? But they're horrible cars with 350,000 miles on them. And uh, sure, they get painted up and they took some dents out and they look nice, but the reality is they're, but the dollar is the best one of the three, okay? Across the street, okay, across the street, there's a Honda dealer, right? With some nice shiny new cars right out in front. You know what they are? There's a gold colored, <laughs> a gold colored Honda Accord and a silver Honda Accord, brand new with no miles, right? The most reliable cars on the road. You want to go to the Honda dealer and that's what got people like you and I choose to do. So, you know, the dollar, blah, blah, blah. I'll agree with them on that. Yes, the dollar can actually but don't forget when the dollar reverses, and it will, and it will, that will be another so big, big, big supportive um, uh, element for the silver price and gold price. Now we got a little story from him. So let's hear what he has to say. As an anecdotal side point, I have... I have to note that the recent metals articles that I've written on Seeking Alpha have been quite poorly read. My articles on the stock market well exceed 10,000 reads every single week. Interestingly, when I used to write about the metals years ago, those articles would easily exceed 10,000 readers, okay, every single week. Yet my current articles see half, if not even less. People aren't interested in silver and gold. We talked about this earlier, okay? That's actually a good thing. That gives so much room for when the, you know, when the when the reality of the fact that silver and gold are valuable, when people do begin to wake up more, there's going to be so it's a it's it's there's only 5,000 people reading his articles. There used to be 10,000 people, okay? Just think about this. If it goes back to 10,000 people, that would likely represent twice as much money in the market in an already in an already challenging market. I was talking with Coin Shop Chris this morning. He's telling me 10 ounce bars are becoming more difficult. I'm not going to say there's an all out shortage, but there's signs of stress in the silver market, right? There's signs. It's, it's not like it's, it's a very delicate, uh, sensitive market. Did it take all that much back in March and April to make it that, you know, you hear it all the time. You walked into your co local coin shop and they didn't have anything on the shelves, right? Re just think about, think about, I know, man, sometimes we feel lonely because there's, there's, there's not that many people, especially in the United States, that are silver and gold enthusiasts. But at the end of the day, that's actually a good thing, okay? So his current are this is this is where it gets interesting. This is where we're going to talk about twenty seven hundred dollar gold, and I'm going to say fifty three dollars silver next year. Okay, uh, my current articles see half of the reading, if not less. The reads of those the reads of those garnered by my general markets. Okay, I think this presents us with an anecdotal evidence that there is not much interest in the metals market. Yes, and it supports our expectations of a bottoming in the market price and our expectation that a major rally will take hold into 2024. Okay, now, now, remember, this is the guy that called the bottom back in 2015, 2016, when nobody cared. It's really weird right now because we are near record high in the gold price in particular. Wow, thank you, Dana. Thank you for the super chat. Super appreciated. We're sitting near record high. Guys, wake up. Wake up. I know. <laughs> we get lulled to sleep. It's wakey time. Wakey, wakey. Okay. 
We are near an all-time high in gold. <sighs> and we're fighting, and, that, and that, that was achieved in major headwinds, right? Running into the wind. It's not going to take. I don't think central banks are going to stop buying gold. I don't think the Chinese are going to stop buying gold. I don't think the Russians are going to stop, 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 bop, bop. I, I can't talk. Stop, bop, 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 stop buying gold. <laughs> Let's see what he has to say. So allow me to reiterate my expectations in the metals market. Here comes a forecast. Thank you, Daniel. You're the best, my friend. And everybody, please say thank you to all the moderators that are here today. We're almost to 500 people, almost to 300 thumbs up. I forget what I have to do when we get to 300 thumbs up. Somebody needs to remind me. Um, all right, I'm going to stay on track. Uh, now, what? how am I supposed to understand what you just said? Hold the walkie-talkie. Oh, hold on. I didn't copy what you said. Hold the walkie-talkie approximately nine and a half inches from your face. Please do not hit the nose, the bell with your nose. Okay. I'm going to turn off my walkie-talkie now. I love you. Goodbye. <laughs> That's right. I forgot. I hit the, no, the bell with my nose. I'm going to stay on track. We're going to get to 300 thumbs up. We're going to get to 500 people on this live stream. So stay with me because here comes the good news, baby. Come on. Let's get some thumbs up. It's good for our soul. It feels good to do that, to press the thumbs up. It feels good to do nice things. Forecast. So allow me to reiterate my expectations in the metals market. I believe we will see a very strong rally in the gold and silver markets as we move into 2024. And my minimum target for the next gold rally is $2,428 region. But, and we like big butts. We cannot lie. But we often see very strong extensions during the precious metals rallies. So depending on the size of those extensions, we may even see a high as high as $2,700 region before the, before the next multi-year correction begins. Wow. That's a big deal. Hey, we got 300 thumbs up. Hold on. Let's talk to Susie. Everybody say hi to Susie. Susie, I can't understand what you say when you don't hold, when you hold it up to your mouth. You got a copy? Copy. Oh, what did you say? I want to thank everyone for getting on to 300 okay. thumbs up. Thank you so very, very much. <laughs> All right, she's such a sweetheart. All right, guys, it's time for the bell. Hold on one second. I'm going to hold it right here. Right here. Are you ready? Woo-wee, 300 thumbs up. Thank you very much. You guys are the best. I can't believe it. Wow, we have 470 people. I want to get to 500. What are we going to talk about? Well, this guy is talking let's, let's let's wrap it up his name is avi gilbert and he writes on seeking alpha he's telling us we could get as high as twenty seven hundred dollar gold next year i'm saying that equates exactly to fifty three dollar gold but it could be higher okay no doubt about it it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out um of course guys uh you know Let's do a quick update, and, I, and I'm not a guru in this area. Thank you, Tony Erickson. Um, it doesn't look like, and I'm hearing, I don't know how you feel about this, but the situation in the Middle East does not seem to be getting any better. I've not read the news headlines this morning, but as of last night, it appeared to be escalating between the United States sending troops, or not troops, ships over there, uh, providing weapons, and it seems like there's like a coalition building of some countries in that region led by Iran. We really want to hope that this situation doesn't get any wor <coughs> worse. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you know, and, and, and we talked about this before. We talked about this months ago. You know, 
that the situation is developing in the world right now on many levels. Things are happening on a much larger scale, and they're happening much more quickly. Lynette Zhang and I talked about that when I talked, talked with her a few months ago. Be prepared. Be buckled in. I'm going to wrap this up before I die on the screen. <laughs> But I should be back tomorrow. Don't forget, I'll put out a new piece of content. I promised every day for the rest of my life, right? Come heck or high water, I will be here because you're important. All you people are important. Thank you, Mark Bernard, for being here. Tony Erickson, thank you for the super chat. Jim M, thank you. Susie, thank you. Uh, guys, do me a favor. Please type four to tell the moderators thank you. We had Sassy Silver in here. We had, I uh, believe, Mary. We had, who else? Annie, thank you, Jim M. Jake's Custom Parts, thank you, Jake. Okay, thanks for being such an awesome community, guys. It's a big deal, all right? Please, I encourage you, subscribe to the channel and then you can leave comments. There's a lot of nice people. Um, I may be getting an actual uh, website be, it's 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 in process being made where we're gonna have a Ron's basement um, uh, bullet like like bulletin board or what do they call that like a place where people can go anytime twenty four hours a day and 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 like chat with each other uh, live like a bullet I think they well I'm an old man I feel strange but like a bulletin board or a chat room or a, you know like this but it'll be there 24 hours a day and available for people uh, because I know you guys like to talk with each other I love to hear what's going on as well I don't know how long that'll take it could be a week it could be a year from now but uh, I'll keep you posted if you have any ideas I was thinking of ways to call it like basement banter or or something like that a good catchy name for what that what we could call that bulletin board where people that that like to talk about silver and gold right and talk I'll talk about the things we like to talk about could go anytime and kind of you know chat back and forth just an idea hey thank you for being here thanks for everything and i will see you yes hold on did you need something sweetheart I guess not. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Thank you.